everybody. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hi everyone, Spider-Man and his good friend Kate here again today to bring you another episode of Self-Defense for Kids. Kate, how are you feeling? Great. It's good to have you here. Thank you as always for coming in. Now team, what we're going to be dealing with today is called a front headlock. A front headlock is looking like this. Now this, like any headlock, go ahead and let me go get him, is what we would consider a severe situation, common for bullies. Now. There's different ways in which to get out of it, but I think simplicity is best. Priority number one is an airway. We're gonna dig in, pull down so we can breathe, even if it's just a little, and I want you to take your chin, bring your chin in. Now you can get your jaw locked by their arm, but it's a risk we have to take because we're already going to be restricted in our airway. But we don't wanna get at what's called a tracheal compression either, which can happen. As we get our airway, we're gonna take our fist and we're gonna punch Low, okay? Now there's other areas you can hit to. You might be able to hit to the leg, you might be able to hit to the stomach, but here's the problem. They're gonna have a lot of strength, even if somebody's not really big and strong, because it's your little neck and both of their arms. And they'll be cranking and choking. You've got this air, airway problem that you're trying to solve, plus all this pain and all this damage that might be happening. We need an immediate release. We can't see very well either. Our eyes are gonna be down. And when you have this pain on your neck, even with your eyes open, you'll be, you'll, you'll be seeing even less because there's going to be all this distortion in your focus. So we're going to punch straight out from where we are, which is going to be a shot low below the belt. The second that happens, I guarantee you they're going to want to let go. And if you need to, you can hit more than once. Punch, 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 slap, whatever you need. The second you're able to affect a release of their resistance, you'll affect a release of their grip by grabbing on and just separating and stepping free. Kate will demonstrate. So as I move up on Kate, Here's your front headlock, right? I'm choking, I'm cranking. She's gonna reach up and create an airway. As she pulls, she pulls her chin in. And I'm still pulling. She's gotta hold on with one of her hands. So for demonstration, she's gonna use her right. She punches straight in, boom! Now when she softens me, my grip is gonna soften. She pulls, plucks them free, gets herself free, and away to safety. That's it. There's your front headlock escape, okay? Let's do it. I step up. She's got to get an airway first. We're in here wrestling, she's staying low, and then all of a sudden, boom, maybe she has to hit again. Boom, and then she plucks free and gets herself out. Again, kids, this is what we call the brain to pain, right? You hurt somebody so they stop thinking about hurting you, and then you can affect your release. It's known as an equalizer, right? Somebody's got both arms around your little neck, you got to do something to soften them up, okay? Again, ma'am, I move in. Pulling, she's getting her airway, and she starts hitting one, hits again two, plucks three, and gets away. That's it, Kate, very good job. Come here and give me five. Your message of the week this week, Kate's gonna tell you about it. <laughs> Just kidding, all right, your message of the week this week, last on our superhero mindsets. Number nine, goes like this. I maintain an optimistic perspective. Optimistic perspective, it's like a positive, um, you look for the good. You look for the good, that's the way you see it, as opposed to looking for the bad. You don't wanna be a human owl. You don't wanna live your life in darkness, right? You don't wanna be a type of person who always notices the bad but fails to see the good. A lot of people grew up to be this way and I think it's because of an insecurity. I think it's because we realize at a certain age that we don't have all the answers and we're probably gonna have a bit of stuff to work on on ourselves. Our attitude, our friendships, the way we communicate, our effort with different tasks, uh, you know, these things are challenging to us. And sometimes they hit our feeling about how we are, our, our self-esteem, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. This happens to everybody. You have to develop self-confidence within yourself, and that's filling up your self-esteem tank, so to speak. Every time you do a positive deed, a random act of kindness, you achieve something, you, you sincerely do something that people praise you for because it's deserving, you will feel better about yourself. And this is how we also learn to build character because a moment ago I said sincerely. Sincerely do well, get realistic praise and constructively helpful comments when appropriate, and chances are you can grow up to be a self-sufficient, well-adjusted person. Work hard, don't be entitled and expect things to just be handed to you, and chances are you'll be more than set up for success. To maintain an optimistic perspective though is when we're in those moments of feeling like, I failed, it's too hard, I can't do it. You don't let those feelings eat you up and dominate the way you see everything. So that you become one day a kid who's just like sitting at his computer just like, everything's dumb. Everything's dumb and everything's pointless. 
Everyone's stupid. I hate everyone. They don't understand me. Every kid has felt that way from time to time. Some adults still feel that way. What can you do? The idea is to remember that you are special, but that feeling is not special. Everybody feels that way from time to time. You got to get past it because if you stay there, your life is going to become a never ending tale of inaction. You're just going to feel that everything's pointless. What's the point? Everything's dumb. Everything's bad. You hate everyone and everything. So why try? And that's not a healthy way to live your life. To maintain an optimistic perspective means that even in the darkest of times, you're going to try to find the good in any situation, even if it's got to be a real stretch, because the good is like a lifeline when you're in quicksand. And if you grab onto that rope and you start pulling, you're like, I'm going to get out of this quicksand. You might just be able to make it out, even though it might strain every ounce of your energy. As opposed to being in that quicksand, you see the lifeline and you're just like, what's the point? Life is dumb. I hate everyone. Just wish I was dead. And it's over. And that's the way a lot of times things go for folks. And it's unfortunate. Spider-Man's encouragement to maintain an optimistic perspective doesn't mean that you're a naive individual. If anything, you're very aware and very alert as to the realities of things and you're a rational human being. You're choosing you're choosing to look for the good because you know you can do more with that kind of positive outlook than you can if you dwell in darkness just on the negative, cynical, pessimistic view of everything in life. Thank you so much for watching. As always, we really appreciate your support. Kate, I really appreciate your support. Thank you for all of your help. And we'll see you in the next episode. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel. You can also like our gym on Facebook at Pecoraro's Fitness and Kickboxing. Visit our gym online at rpdojo.com. And for our instructional DVDs, visit adamlanddvd.com. You can also check out these other Spider-Man videos.